and the masters of the universe. Last time I presented my favorite He-Man episodes, and this time I'll present my least favorite. Although I love He-Man, it was definitely a show done on the quick, which led to some really poor script writing. Also, not all the episode directors were really good at using the iconic stock footage, which is why some episodes really come off as sloppy. Once again, all of these episodes are from Season 1, and there are plenty of other bad episodes besides these ones that you might want to give a pass. Here's just a few of them. It's Not My Fault, The Defection, and Star Child. Now, let's get on with the list. At number 10, The Curse of the Spellstone. Here's an episode with a lot of promise that never really lives up to its potential. Basically, it's another one of those He-Man episodes where Skeletor finds a powerful artifact to use on his conquest of Eternia. It's also one of those episodes where you can find way too many tropes to make it worthwhile. Evelyn disguises herself as an old lady like she does in so many episodes, He-Man constantly states the obvious, and even the Spellstone is just the stock yellow ball used countless times throughout the series. It's a sloppy and lazy episode, with a very far-fetched premise of Evelyn turning the Eternians against the King and Queen. However, this episode has a pretty decent appearance by Stratos, some funny lines, and even some decent original animation, so I let it off easy. Number 9, Ordeal in the Darklands. Tila wants to go test out her skills in the Darklands, but becomes captured by the wizard Kor, who thinks his daughter has been abducted by He-Man. My biggest gripe with this episode is the way it treats Tila as a complete moron who goes off heading into danger despite warnings from everyone around her. I'm going to the Darklands and that's final! But it's a sloppy and messy episode overall. They even blatantly recycle the character Celise from a prior episode to play Kor's daughter. Recycling character models isn't a rarity in He-Man, but this time they didn't even change her clothes or hair color. The only reason this episode is only number 9 is because of the Crimson Scourge, who made my list of favorite He-Man monsters. Number 8, A Tale of Two Cities. He-Man saves a woman from a group of bird people, gets amnesia for the second time since Quest for He-Man is made to fight in an arena, and saves a bunch of black people you never see in another He-Man episode. You may get the feeling like this isn't even a He-Man episode, since the only familiar characters are He-Man and Battle Cat. In fact, you'd be very right, because A Tale of Two Cities was a recycled script from Filmation's Tarzan cartoon from the mid-1970s, which explains all the black people. It's not an entirely horrible episode, but it just feels so out of place with its lack of recognizable characters that it's not really worthwhile. Number 7, Orko's Favorite Uncle. Some of you may be surprised to see this here considering Return of Orko's Uncle was in my top 10. The premise of this episode is very similar, with Orko's Uncle Montork being pulled from Trolla by a magical force. However, the episode is almost the complete opposite of Return. In this one, it's Montork who's being controlled by the villain, a warlock named Tauron, who is a more imposing villain than those seen in the Return episode. However, this one just plain sucks. The writing is sloppy, the animation is kinda dodgy, and even Tauron deflates at the end. Like I said, you do not need to see this episode in order to enjoy Return of Orko's Uncle. Number 6, Song of Solis. This is just a really dumb idea for an episode. Some asshats have built a city over a giant monster's lair, and only a singer named Solis can lull it to sleep and prevent it from destroying the city. Skeletor kidnaps Solis, the singer, and tries to force her to use her magical singing abilities to get into Grayskull. Firstly, I really didn't care about the character of Solis. Secondly, this episode cuts away to pointless action scenes that don't relate to anything way too often making the whole thing very unfocused. Thirdly, it features an island of ice in a lake of fire. What? Fourthly, it has the most pointless return appearance of a series original character, Lizard Man from the She-Demon of Phantos. Too bad you can't float like me, Lizzie. And finally, He-Man saves the day by pounding the ground and killing the monster outright. Worst finale ever. A zero G bubble. 
I always said you were a lightweight, Skeletor. <laughs> Number five, the diamond ray of disappearance. This actually is the pilot episode of the series, but I'd say one of the single worst episodes overall. Like the curse of the Spellstone, it's just about Skeletor finding a magic artifact to take down the heroes. The finale is what ruins this one for me, it's just really sloppy and poorly executed. However, this episode was the first animated, so I think it doesn't deserve to be any higher, because obviously Filmation was still getting its shit together at this point. It does have the entire Council of Evil, which is nice, and some pilot one-off elements which are interesting, but what kills it for me is that the villains are trying to open the jawbridge with a frickin' hook and rope. Attach the rope! Number 4, The Time Corridor. This is another episode I wish would have been a lot better than it really is. Skeletor basically goes back in time to plant the Wheel of Infinity, which is supposed to destroy Castle Greyskull in the future. Or, um, present. The problem is that the premise alone doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, isn't Skeletor trying to conquer, not destroy Greyskull? Whatever. Secondly, the overall writing and dialogue in this episode is just very poor. Thirdly, it features a completely pointless original character, Fangman, who's just a cheap replacement Beastman. And finally, the ape men that Skeletor uses as his lackeys were just really annoying. Number 3, Kalasara Wakes. This episode not only has a ridiculous premise, but loads of crap that just doesn't make any sense to me. Skeletor uses the Collector to gather energy from living things to bring a giant statue to life in order to get into Greyskull. This is what you call the stupid questions episode. Firstly, where the crap does Queen Marlena get that completely random bit about the effects of Skeletor's being becoming permanent by sundown? Secondly, how did the sorcerers know to make a magic hoop to connect Skeletor's beams to undo their effects? And thirdly, why did Skeletor go through all that trouble when He-Man just defeats Colossar with one punch? There are just way too many logic problems for this episode to be at all enjoyable. Number 2, a beastly sideshow. Beastman disguises himself as a carnival owner and uses Pretty Kitty to kidnap Cringer. This is an episode which could have had some promise, especially since it really deals with the relationship of Adam and Cringer, but it's just way too stupid to be any good. Firstly, it's just very sloppy. Secondly, who the fuck is Pretty Kitty and where did she disappear to after they nabbed Cringer? I've always suspected she was just Panthor in drag. Thirdly, after He-Man finds Cringer, he decides to go after Skeletor rather than just get the hell out of Snake Mountain. And finally, the day is saved by using Pepper. Yay. Number 1, The Royal Cousin. There are a number of reasons I hate this episode, but the biggest and most important of all... Jeremy! I wanna keep it! I told you, you don't have enough money. This little butt munch is the single most annoying child character I've seen in any cartoon. Here are just some of his finest moments. The last time I saw you, you were just a baby. Big deal. This is Man at Arms. Don't you have a real name? Do it again or I'll tell the king you were mean to me. My cousin's a real charmer, all right. Secondly, this episode just doesn't have any finesse to it. Unlike Creatures from the Tar Swamp, which featured another bitchy cousin of Adam's, but was actually very enjoyable. Just look at this mess of a scene. Jeremy, bring me my machine. Stop the boy! Oh. In the end, this episode just left a bad taste in my mouth. And it never washes away, no matter how many times I see this episode. It is absolutely, and by far, the worst He-Man episode ever. Don't tell me. Tell He-Man. I am telling you. This has been Honda the Honda Mackin, and see you on the next one. Forces of Skeletor.